Hey guys, Richard Holden here. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for supporting it all year. It is almost the new year, so let's finish off 2021 strong with another video on 5.7 liter LS1 performance, including comparing carburation to fuel injection. In this video, we're going to take a look at a bunch of performance modifications on the OG original 5.7 liter LS1. We're going to take a look at camshaft upgrades, including a mistake I might have made in that original test. We're also going to take a look at throttle body upgrades and intake manifold upgrades, including comparing fuel injection to carburation. So what do you say? Let's check it out. To get things started on our 5.7 liter LS1, you know, the original, the one that started it all. This is an all aluminum motor. This was actually a crate motor that belonged to the guys from West Tech Performance. And Tom, who used to work there, and I that finally decided, hey, look, we're not going to ha have these things just sit around. Let's get these things up and running. Then obviously after we did that, then the whole thing snowballed and everybody started testing LS1s. But this was the uh, an original crate motor from GM. We ran this thing in stock trim with a fast XFI management system, but we made a few modifications to this thing. We wanted to test it with the stock cam and then a couple of their cam upgrades and then show other modifications that we make to this LS1. So we ran this thing with a set of hooker inch and three quarter headers. We had collector extensions on it and then mufflers. We, this thing was also equipped with a later LS1, LS6 intake manifold and still the stock throttle body. The LS1 manifold, not great. The LS6 manifold obviously is much better. This thing had the stock cam, stock head, stock rockers, basically stock crate motor. It had no accessories on it. It had an open throttle body. Obviously, it had headers on it, and it was, the tune was optimized, which is why this thing makes more than the rated 345 horsepower. But run in this manner after an optimized tune and run on just pump 91 that we had here in California, this thing made, made 414 horsepower and 418 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we put our, the first of our two camshafts in it. This was a Len Lenati Voodoo cam, and this thing was uh, 500, and the lift was 531, 531, 531. It was a 212, 218 degree duration split, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. Good kind of, think of it as like a stage one-ish or two-ish kind of truck cam back in the day. They, they weren't doing truck cams back when we did this test, but this was a good cam upgrade for the LS1. As you can see, it picked up a lot of power. We were all the way up to 442 or three horsepower, and peak torque was up to 438 foot-pounds. And so it did very well. But, and here's the weird thing that happened. So we put, after trying that camshaft, we wanted to try something that we had that was a little bigger, and it was a, another Lenati cam. And this one was 530, 549 lift, 212, 221 degree exhaust duration. So it had much more exhaust duration than the, or three degrees more exhaust duration than the 218 cam, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. But here's what happened when we put that cam in. You can see, oddly enough, it made less power everywhere than the 212, 218 camshaft. It was, it kind of matched it out at the very top. It made 440 horsepower. Torque was down to 426 or 27 foot pounds. So you can see it was down and that's, that's in the red now. You can see it was down everywhere. Um, compared to the smaller camshaft. It just makes me think that maybe <laughs> um, I, something happened during the test or that I don't have the data right or something. I, so I, I really kind of want to go back and revisit this test because I don't think that there's any way that that camshaft with 220 degrees of exhaust duration should do what we're seeing here. Now, I don't have the, I don't have the cam card, so I can't look at the actual valve vents and stuff and kind of get a better idea for this. But this is one of those instances where I go back through my data and take a look at it and think, you know, I don't think it really should do that. So it makes me wonder if something happened, the cam was installed incorrectly or boxed incorrectly. You know, we'd have to put it on a cam doctor to actually figure that out. But this is an interesting comparison. But at least it does show that when we put a mild kind of truckish camshaft in an LS1, we obviously get fairly good power. So now let's take a look at a few other mods. Now we can check out the next upgrades that we made to our 5.7 liter LS1. And one of the common questions I get all the time is, hey, Richard, what, what about a bigger throttle body? Do I need a bigger throttle body? And the answer is yes, sometimes. 
<laughs> now, there are, there's lots of talk about on the different throttle body sizes and when you would use them, but basically the most, the easiest way to understand this is you need a throttle body when a throttle body is the restriction. If the throttle body itself is not the restriction in power output, like if the throttle body will already support the amount of power that you're making, you're not going to gain any power. The other thing to talk about here real quickly is that you should match the throttle body size to the inlet of the intake manifold. It doesn't do any good to have a 78 millimeter opening in your manifold, like in a stock LS1 or LS6 manifold, and then try to put a 105 or 102 millimeter throttle body, or even a 90 millimeter throttle body on there. It just, it's not gonna work. Even if you radius the entry and, and make it so it's port match and all that stuff, you're just not really gonna see any gains because normally the neck of the intake manifold is also going to be sized like that unless it just opens up right past the opening, then in that case you might be able to get some gains. But what I'm saying is whatever size you make the opening, whatever size the opening is, is in the throttle body or the intake manifold, the throttle body should also be that size. So we're going to take a look at an upgrade we did on the LS6 intake manifold. We ran the stock throttle body and then we ran an AccuFab throttle body. And actually in this case, the AccuFab throttle body measured the same. The blade was the same size as the factory throttle body. It's just that the design of the throttle body itself improved the flow. Our, our throttle body came from AccuFab. They know a thing or two about making good throttle bodies and making them flow. And they just wanted to make a bolt-on way back when, a bolt-on one that would replace the factory one. But this thing improved the flow by two or 300 CFM. And so just from changing the design, the, the entry and, and the taper and all that stuff, and it flowed better and it actually made some power. So here is our... 5.7 liter LS1. It had the Lenati camshaft in it, the 212, 218. It had long tube headers, obviously had an optimized tune and all that. And it made 443 horsepower, 443.5 and 437.5 foot pounds. This is with the stock throttle body. Here's what happened when we added the AccuFab throttle body. We did see a power increase. The power jumped up to, jumped up six whole horsepower up to 449 horsepower and torque checked in at 440 foot-pounds. Now you're not gonna see dramatic gains from a throttle body unless the throttle body itself is really restricting this. Like if we had, if this motor was wanting to make six or 700 horsepower at NA trim and we had a stock throttle body on there and then we put the right size throttle body on it, you'd see big gains. Or if you have a positive displacement blower, Kenny Bell or Whipple or TVS or something, then you definitely want to go to a super big throttle body. But in most cases on this kind of mild application, you're only going to get a handful of horsepower. Let's check out our next mods. Now that we take a look at the throttle body upgrade, we're actually going to look at intake manifold changes on this. We ran a few different carbureted intake manifolds on it, dual plane, single plane, and then a single plane with EFI versus carburation. So lots of good stuff. So this is our 5.7 liter with our 212, 218 camshaft. Right now it has a dual plane Edelbrock Performer intake manifold on it and it actually has an 850 Holley carburetor on it. And for those guys that are interested in knowing, here's, here's how it compares to the fuel injected version. The dual plane actually makes more power down low below 4,400 RPM than the long runner factory LS6 intake manifold. It makes less power at the top. In fact, it made for peak power, it made 440.7, so 441. Peak torque checked in at 442 or 43 foot pounds. And you can see it made torque earlier in the RPM range than even the long runner factory EFI style manifold. So what I want to do is we're going to get rid of our, because it'll get too complicated here, we're going to get rid of our EFI. And we're going to show a comparison between this is the dual plane carbureted version. And here's what happens when we substituted a single plane GM performance intake manifold. And in typical single plane, dual plane fashion, it does what they normally do. What happens is the dual plane makes more power down low. The single plane makes more power up top. At some point, they're going to cross over. In this case, they crossed over at 4750 RPM, where the dual plane made more power down low. So if you're interested in drivability and, and you're not running at the top of the RPM range a lot, the dual plane works for very well. And actually, in this combination, I kind of would recommend the dual plane anyway, because as you can see, the single plane didn't add a whole bunch of power. It was okay, it made 453 horsepower, so from a peak standpoint, it obviously was better than the 441 or two uh, horsepower offered by the dual plane, 
but it didn't add a ton more power and it only was, uh, you know, a significant amount better by 10 or 12 horsepower out at the very, very top. But for most of the curve, it's either similar or made a lot less down low because the difference down low was 30 or 35 foot pounds of torque. So there really isn't much of a comparison between those two. In this case, I think I would pick the dual plane over the single plane. But there's an interesting thing. We ran this particular intake manifold that we ran was from GM Performance and it had provisions for injectors. In fact, we had to plug those while we were running the carburetor version. And what we did was we could easily switch over, take the carburetor off, put a four hole throttle body on it, and then run it fuel injected with our uh, XFI management system. And we did exactly that. We put an elbow on it and uh, a big 102 millimeter throttle body because that's what size the elbow was set for. So here's what happened when we ran it fuel injected. <clears throat> and the fuel injected version is now in red. And you can see the fuel injected motor basically makes less power everywhere than, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get rid of the dual plane here because it gets a little confusing. So this is single plane versus single plane, carbureted versus EFI, and the EFI is in blue. And you can see it made less power everywhere than the carbureted version. And the reason for that is not because of airflow or anything, but basically it's because of charge cooling. The carburetor, the atomization of the fuel through the carburetor and into the manifold cools the charge air. And so there's no change in intake runner length. There's no change in design. The, the only change really is where we're introducing the fuel because we can change the air fuel however we want with the EFI. We optimize the air fuel with the EFI and with a carburetor. And what happens is we just get charge cooling with the carburetor that we don't get with the port injected EFI. Now, if we did a throttle body injection on the, on the, the uh, intake manifold, which I didn't do because we didn't have one to do that test. But if I did that, more than likely the power would be very similar because we would have the charge cooling by, by introducing the fuel at the top of the intake manifold. But here's what happened. We ran carburetion versus EFI, so all the carburetor guys will be happy. Yeah, we make more power than EFI. But obviously, the nice thing is to be able to go in and tune everything with EFI and, and make it all safe at every RPM range, which a lot of times you can't really do with a carburetor. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, as we're winding down 2021, what do we learn from this video on performance modifications for the LS1, the 5.7 liter? Well, we learned the following thing. Always camshafts, definitely a good upgrade. Even a fairly mild cam, I still don't know exactly what was going on with that slightly more exhaust duration and why we didn't make more power. That just means I need to do more testing. Throttle body upgrades, yes, throttle body upgrades are worthwhile, but not always. If you have a mild combination, the stock throttle body works just fine. As you go up in power, you need a bigger throttle body. What about the intake manifolds? Typical kind of thing, dual plane, single plane, dual plane makes more power down low, single plane makes more power at top, but not by a whole bunch in this case. Also, what about fuel injection versus carburetion? The carburetor made more power. Does that mean they're better? Let me know in the comments. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. It's almost New Year's Eve. Thanks for watching.